Japan soon for a report on the recovery efforts. But first, we discuss the latest news from the crippled Japanese nuclear plant. Joining me here, here in New York is Carl Grossman. He's an investigative journalist and professor of journalism at SUNY College at Old Westbury. He's author of several books on the nuclear industry. And with us in Washington, D.C., is Paul Gunter. He's a reactor oversight project director at, nuclear, at the nuclear watchdog group Beyond Nuclear. He's also a co-founder of the Clamshell Alliance, an anti, an anti nuclear group. Uh, Paul, I want to begin with you. The latest reports that we got uh, overnight and early this morning about the situation uh, in the uh, in the in, in the reactors at Fukushima. Could you give us your sense of what's happening there? Well, obviously, right now it's, there's a lot of contradictory information. I think that what's most important to understand is that uh, among these uh, six units at Fukushima Daiichi, uh, units f um, four, five, and six. The fuel in the reactor core uh, was taken out of the reactor vessel, taken out of containment, and placed in these um, rooftop spent fuel pools. So all of the radioactive inventory was moved. We're very concerned about this very large volume of radioactive material that is now in a conflict of information in its state of, um, you know, no water or water. But clearly, right now, there is a serious danger of a full-core meltdown outside of containment at Unit 4. This could occur at Unit 5 and 6, and we still have the crippled reactors at 1, 2, and 3. Uh, and the crippled reactor 3, which has also been uh, releasing uh, pretty regularly now a radioactive steam, there's, uh, there, are the, uh, uh, there are reports that there has been a, a breach in the containment vessel there. And that, of course, is the, uh, the only reactor that had the uh, more toxic uh, mixed oxide fuel uh, that was uh, brought into it in the last couple of years uh, as, as, uh, uh, as fuel. Your, your sense of reactor 3? Um, well, uh, Unit 3 um, is burning uh, what they call plutonium oxide. They like to call it MOX as an acronym rather than POX, but in, in fact it's plutonium oxide. This uh, uh, fuel has a, a, a lower melting point for one, and it's uh, just loaded with plutonium, which is highly toxic at micro levels. Um, the containment, which is a Mark I General Electric boiling water reactor, we have 23 of these reactors in the United States, dead ringers for Fukushima Daiichi Unit uh, 1 through 6. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's right now in this state of uh, it's ruptured. Unit 2 is also compromised its containment. Uh, these, are, these have all been documented. So, uh, you know, the, the walls of defense are falling with the melting of the cores. The uh, collapsing of the—we're uh, expecting the collapsing of the vessels. And then with these, da these damaged containments, these are all open windows to the atmosphere. Uh, Carl Grossman, you have been following now for decades uh, the uh, uh, the claims of the industry, the politicians about nuclear energy, both in the United States and, and around the world. Uh, your uh, assessment of what— uh, has happened here and what it will mean in terms of uh, nuclear power in the future? <clears throat> what has happened here is an enormous nuclear power tragedy, and we're on the cusp, I fear, of an even more horrific tragedy. Uh, with a um, loss of cool-down accident, and we have multiple loss of cool-down accidents underway, and importantly, breach of containment. And as Paul said, that's quite possible now. <laughs> Just the most enormous disaster, except for a loss of water accident in a spent fuel pool where you have tons upon tons of nuclear poisons, no containment, except for some corrugated steel uh, ceiling. That stuff gets out in a loss of water accident, and it would get out explosively because of the fuel rods being made of zirconium. And I could explain that. It will just burst into the environment, become airborne, affect not only Japan, but much of the world. 
Uh, and Carl, in, in in the reporting that you've done in, in the past and the battles over the siting of, of nuclear plants in the United States, because uh, obviously uh, all of the reports are saying, well, this that's all happening in Japan here in the United States. Uh, we're in a in a much better situation with our plants. But one of the things that you uncovered was an assessment that the that the uh, the government did back in the 1980s of the potential. Uh, uh, the potential deaths and injuries that might occur from a reactor uh, accident and a, and a breach of containment uh, in the United States. Could you talk about that, you know, They've known the consequences all along. This is a report. It's called Calculation Reactor Accident Consequences 2, done by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, not Greenpeace. And it projects peak early fatalities, peak injuries, peak cancer deaths, scale cost in billions in terms of property damage and a large hunk of earth, the earth being rendered uninhabitable for millennia. And just for example, for the Indian Point 3 nuclear plant, which is about 35 miles from where we sit now in New York, 50,000 peak early fatalities, 167,000 peak early injuries, cancer deaths, 14,000. Scale cost of billions, they say, 314 billion. In 1980s dollars, we're talking about a trillion. As to the likelihood of a severe core melt accident, in 1985, the NRC acknowledged that over a 20-year period, the likelihood of a severe core melt accident to be basically 50-50 among the 100 nuclear power plants, there's 104 now, in the United States. They've known all along here in this country that disaster can, could come, and there's a good likelihood of it coming. And they've known the consequences. You're saying that the NRC itself uh, estimated a 50-50 chance oh. of, a, of, a, of a meltdown in our plants here within uh, 20 years? Over a, over a 20-year period. That was formal testimony provided to a watchdog committee in Congress chaired by Senator Edward Markey of Massachusetts when he asked the question, what does the NRC and its staff believe the likelihood to be of a severe core meltdown? So, you know, when you hear these lines about, oh, the, the chances of a, of, of a severe core meltdown, infinitesimal, uh, and if there is, like you're hearing these reports out of Japan, an accident, oh, just some minor effects among uh, the population, uh, n not at all. You go to the documents, and uh, many of them were, well, secret for years. In my book, I did a book in 1980, cover up what you're not supposed to know about nuclear power. There's a line in a Atomic Energy Commission report, WASH 740 update, the possible size of the area of such a disaster, this is a, a meltdown with loss of containment, might be equal to that of the state of Pennsylvania. In other words, covering the whole state of what would be the state of Pennsylvania, which almost occurred with a Three Mile Island accident. We're talking about huge disasters here. And with a loss of water accident in a spent fuel pool, because you got much more nuclear garbage. And it, again, no containment, it would be even worse. And just let me mention one other thing. Everybody should, when they hear about these hydrogen explosions, understand that the fuel rods are composed of a substance called zircaloy. It's based on something called zirconium. And way back in the late 40s and 50s, they were looking for something to build these con uh, not control rods, fuel rods with. And they decided to use zirconium because it allowed the neutrons to move from fuel rod to fuel rod and keep the, uh, the chain reaction going. Problem with zirconium, the other major industrial use is the speck on a flash bulb. Zirconium is explosive. At 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, it explodes. Before that, it emits hydrogen gases, which have exploded in several, several of these plants. There's, oh, in a nuclear plant itself, this is in my book, 20 tons of zirconium. In a spent fuel pool, you're talking about, because there's all these old fuel rods, hundreds of tons. That stuff, again, it's, things get hot, explodes. Uh, well, I, I also wanted to talk about the history of the type of nuclear reactors. There have, been, there have been warnings about the design going back four decades. The organization Nuclear Information Resource Service recently released posted, and posted online three memos from the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission on the GE Mark I reactor design. The memos show that the commission knew of serious problems with the re design of these reactors as early as of the 1970s. Diana Rigo of the Nuclear Information and Resource Service spoke with us last evening. 
in 1971, uh, Stephen Hanauer of the Atomic Energy Commission did a memo to the Atomic Energy Commission outlining serious problems with the design of the kind of reactors that are operating and are failing and melting in Japan right now. In September of 1971, the, uh, he did a memo that recommended that the United States stop licensing reactors using this pressure suppression system. But his recommendation was uh, rejected by the upper-level Atomic Energy Commission safety officials. The top safety official, Joseph Hendry, he agreed with the recommendation, but he rejected it, saying that it could well mean the end of nuclear power. Now, the problems that were raised in those earlier memos are what led to the disaster here in Japan. And I wanted to point out that the United States has, since those memos were uh, written and then ignored or rejected, um, licensed and has operating 23 of this type of nuclear reactor. Uh, I also wanted to – that was Diana Regal, the Nuclear Information and Resource Service, who spoke with us last night. Uh, Paul Gunter, I'd like to ask you about the uh, – the, the news has been worse each day uh, in the efforts to try to uh, get uh, control of these, uh, of these crippled reactors. But if the government is able now to finally bring electricity back, as they've been saying they've been trying to string a new line, and to begin bringing water back into uh, 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 into these reactors and into the spent fuel pools, uh, uh, do you envision any problems if they're able, uh, continuing problems, if they're able to get the water back on? Well, let's first of all realize that what's been demonstrated at this catastrophe is that nuclear power is going to be more of a liability than it is an asset during natural disaster or national crisis. We sincerely hope that the uh, uh, Tokyo Electric Power Company can restore power, but uh, these six units are history. Uh, the best we can do right now is, is see them buried under concrete and uh, hopefully uh, that can contain it. Uh, that's the best scenario right now. Uh, but, but clearly, um, if you want to um, uh, actually have civil defense, we real, the, the real issue here is to prevent this from happening. And we believe that means to be uh, mean you promptly shut down these most dangerous reactor designs all over the world. And then we begin the rapid phase out of this inherently dangerous technology and phase in a 21st century energy policy of renewable energy and energy efficiency. Well, Paul Gunter of the Nuclear Watchdog Group Beyond Nuclear, I want to thank you for being with us. Carl Grossman, professor at SUNY Old Westbury, uh, thank you. And a, and a continuing investigative journalist on the issue of, uh, of nuclear power. I want to